In this video we're going to have a look at the planning questions that come up in every single practical paper um, you do, especially for those who missed the lesson last week on this. If you want to, pause the video so you can read the question. My advice is when you first read through the question is to highlight the key points relating to it and especially what you're going to be changing, what you're going to be investigating. So it normally says in the first couple of sentences, a student is investigating the factors affect the size of a crater of a ball when it drops into the sand. So that's really important that sentence, it tells you straight away this is the variable you're going to measure. And then you are going to choose a factor which affects this variable. So a, so the, a variable here will affect that variable which is the size of the crater. You have to plan an experiment which will enable you to investigate one factor. Sometimes they say they want you to investigate something but in this case you've got free choice told you the apparatus and they've given you a checklist. So in the exam you go down and tick off as you complete each one. Now, first things first, I'd always suggest writing down the different variables. Okay, follow the same format every time, which I've got here. The variables, independent variable, which is the one you change, dependent variable, the one you measure, and everything else has to go in the control variable box here. So when we think about this experiment, which looks something, always going to look something like this, a number of different variables. For example, we could have the mass of the ball, uh, the size of the ball. Now, size is a bit vague, so let's be specific. The diameter, remember, always be really sp specific. We've also got the drop height, because that will obviously affect the crater size. Um, and then there's some other ones which kind of won't have so much of an effect, so they're less interesting. For example, you could go from room temperature, the depth of the sand, the type of material at the bottom. So is sand different to bigger, thicker, rocky sort of material? These are probably the main three. So you can choose one of those to investigate. I'm going to just go with this one, the mass of the ball. And that is the one you are changing. So that goes in here, mass. Don't just say mass, you've got to be specific, mass of ball. Now the one you measure, we're told on this, is going to be the crater size. Now again, the size is too vague, so let's be specific, let's call it the diameter of the hull. Okay, because when it hits the sand, it's going to make a divot like this. You could also do the depth of the hull, but you've only got a choice of doing the diameter, which is this, or the depth, as long as you're specific and you keep it constant. Now, once you've chosen those two, all other variables have to go into the control variable box. So for example, as you can see down here, we've done the mass of the ball. So these two need to be in the control variables here. Okay, so diameter of ball and the drop height. Otherwise, they'll affect the experiment. So um, you put those down there. Other things would be, for example, the sand used. Um, I'm sure there's a few others, but th those are probably the key ones there. Okay, so always a really good way to start laying out all the variables. After that, even if it doesn't ask for it, it's always worth drawing a labelled diagram. If it doesn't ask for it, I'd wait and see if you've got time to do it. But if it does ask for it, make sure you've drawn it and you've labelled it, because it makes it really clear what you're going to be doing. In our case, we're going to be dropping it from the same height every time. We're going to hit the sand, it's going to make a little hole which we'll then measure. So we can start writing out a method in a moment. So let's go back to our question and see what we've done. There's the checklist. State which factor is being investigated. We've decided on that one already, it's the mass of the ball. State the key variables you control, we've done that already. Now, listing any additional apparatus needed. So the only two that we've got are up here. And straight away, a big one should jump out. So the next suggestion when you answer this question now is you've done your variables, you've done your label diagram, the next thing to have is your apparatus. In this case, there's a big one that we need is a ruler, because we need to check that we drop it from the same height. And also some mass balance or scales so that we can get the mass of the ball. We might also need a smaller ruler or another ruler to measure the diameter of the so we've got for the diameter of the hole, but also for the drop height, you need two rulers. That would be the key additional apparatus needed. So now we've listed the apparatus. Oh, excuse me. This is the apparatus that we need. We need to explain briefly, notice the word briefly, so we don't have to go into huge amount of details about what we're going to do. So the next thing we're going to write is a method. It normally comes after the apparatus method. Always a good idea to number it and just go down in order what you're going to do. So 
we start by choose ball. And remember what we're investigating. If you're not sure, you go back up to your variables. We're investigating the mass of the ball. So choose ball plus measure mass. Now, is that enough detail? No. You always need to say what you're going to use to do that. So measure mass with balance. Okay, and then you need to drop it from the same height. So I'd choose a height. Let's just say drop ball from 50 centimeters. It doesn't matter what value you really choose as long as it's reasonable height. And it also shows that you're going to keep it consistent throughout. So keep same throughout. Once you drop the ball, it's obviously going to hit the sand. You can then measure diameter D of hole and again remember state what you're going to use using ruler you could add in some details about avoiding parallax error um for example this is the crater here you could line your ruler up like this and you could use something to ensure that you avoid parallax error there and parallax error is, is the idea that from reading it from eye level directly above so not there because that would give a false reading but over here you want to read it once you've done this you now need to choose choose another ball of a different mass but same diameter so you'd have to have some different balls of different masses but same diameter you could even put in some value so you might do a you know, 100 gram ball 200 gram ball 300 gram ball 400 gram ball 500 gram ball the point is you need to repeat it at least with four or five different measurements so you can get the trend if you just do one maybe your graph would look something like this we've got no idea what's going on you need at least three or four well, no, more than that, five, I'd say, to get a good trend and reveal what's going on. Okay, and then step five, we're just going to repeat each mass. It's always good to repeat three times plus average. That was going to reduce the chance of any errors. So let's look back now at what we need to have done. So it's briefly how we carry out the experiment. We've talked about that. And we've also actually alluded to this, state any precaution you'd use to obtain reliable results. So things like reading at eye level, um, other things, for example, of course the sand is going to get messed up, so we need to flatten sand, sand after each drop. You can just use a ruler and scrape that as you go. The last thing we need to look at is a suitable graph, okay, that would use to draw uh, conclusion from our results. Now, best thing to always do when you're thinking about what graph you're going to draw is go back to your variables. Okay, which was the mass of the ball is what we're going to change, and the diameter ball is what we're going to measure. This makes it easy. The one that you change, i.e., the independent, is going to go here. So in this case, it's mass of ball, and that was in grams, what could be in kilograms. And the one you measure goes on the y axis. Diameter of hull, this would probably be in centimeters. So that's the graph that you're going to draw. You obviously don't need to draw it because you're not going to get any results, but we just need to know uh, what you're going to plot against what. And it's always the independent variable on the x axis against the dependent variable on the y axis, well, nearly always. Um, but you can also write it in words. So you could write plot independent, uh, sorry, plot mass of ball versus diameter of hull. Just to show you that now, if we go to our mark scheme, again, feel free to pause the video, look at this in more detail. You can see that we've clearly stated the variable we're going to change. In this case, that is the mass of the ball. We've also named some variables that we're going to keep constant. They only wanted one, but we've done multiple. We've also mentioned a meter rule and also essential apparatus at the mass balance, so that's done. We've also talked about the method. The idea that we drum drop the ball, I know it's obvious, measure the diameter of the depression. So we've done that. And we've talked about repeating it for new new value of the variable. Well, the new variables were 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams. Or you can just say repeat for different mass in this case. There's also all these additional points. So you just need to have one of them to get the mark. And we've mentioned quite a few. Flatten the sand, uh, measure diameter ball. Oh, that's quite clever. One reliable method of releasing it. Obviously, if your hand's shaking, you might give it a little push. So quite a clever idea. And this is from the topic. We see is use an electromagnet that you can switch magnet. You can switch it off and that will release the ball without any force and it's very fair. There's no human involved in it. Uh, and also keep the height the same actually because you could obviously just fix it 
at the height that you want next to the ruler and drop it into the sand. Now the graph we've also mentioned depth of the depression or diameter of the depression in this case against the variable which was the mass of the ball. So you'd get full marks with that method there. Now you're probably thinking well I want to practice some more of these. Well great news is you've got this book. This is the green one. That's green. The camera doesn't really show it. The green one with that title. Now you might be thinking well I've done a question. How do I know what the answers are? Well at the bottom of every question you have this. This is really important. This is the year of the paper. So this was 2017. This is the month end being November. And this tells you the paper number. So 51 in this case, which is the practical paper. Um, 61 is the one you do if you don't use, if you don't actually collect data, um, which we won't be doing. But anyway, you can ignore that. The key point is 51 is the um, paper you can look up for. If you look at the link I sent you, it's got all the folders in. If you then find November 2017, in there are all the papers. And then if you look for 51 with MS written near it, MS obviously stands for mark scheme. So just find 51 MS in the November 2017 folder. And that will give you the mark scheme. So it's a great place to go to practice these practical questions. Thank you.